Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and also uh, Me Crafty Scrapper Creates over on Facebook. Um, I am making a video today about how we add book pages and directional papers uh, in our signatures of our journals um, so that they're not sideways. I've had quite a few uh, viewer request for that and this particular uh, quandary doesn't bother me at all but um, to some they cannot handle when the um, wording is turned the wrong way so when I add book pages to my journals I just fold them in half and then add them in so they're a little shorter page for me and I mean that's just how I add my book pages into my signatures but now there are some that can't handle this so the wording is going sideways and they wanted me to um, fill them in on how I would add them into my signature without turning them sideways so here's what I do I have done one already and look at there, there is the book page and it's straight up and down, all upright, no worries with that. And all I'm gonna do is put a hinge on it. So here's what I do. I get some washi tape, maybe some older washi tape or some that maybe even has a wild pattern on it that I'm never gonna use. And I get my book pages and you turn them whichever way um, you want to show on the outside. So I like for my little torn edges to show on the outside, like here. It's got the torn edges showing that way. So I put the sides that are um, the straightest together. And I'm not concerned about um, which page comes first and all that kind of stuff because a lot of the times we're going to cover up our book pages so I don't worry about that as far as the order if I'm putting in multiple book pages in a journal signature so I'm just budding the two pages up by each other like that so that I don't see space and then I'm putting a piece of washi just down the middle where I've butted them together like that okay then I'm going to get um, either some coffee dyed paper just some copy paper like this or some bag I've also got let me show you this I've got this bag here it's just paper bag like wrapping that I can do and I'll do that for this one just to show you I'm going to give myself a little mark with something I thought I had my pencil right there but I don't so you know maybe a, like a inch wide can go a little wider if you wanted to and then I'm just going to trim this Now, like I said, if you don't have paper bag, go for, you know, stained copy paper or whatever you would like. You could even use another piece of book page down the middle, too, if you wanted to do that. Okay, so I have this paper bag piece, and then I'm going to get the straight pin out of my top before I poke myself with it then I'm just going to put some glue down the outer edges of this washi and then I'll put a little line down the middle and I'm going to line this up as straight as I can I'm not too worried if it's not super duper straight though and I'm going to put that over the washi now the washi is for um, my benefit anyway to get those pages butted up right up against each other 
before I start adding glue to that paper. It's just a reinforcement for me and a way for me to keep those pages together very well. Okay, then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to, you can either, we can do this, you can either just cut it off because that's enough um, reinforcement there. You don't need any more. Or you can fold this over like so and just glue on the rest of this book page too. Just for a little extra reinforcement. Just line it up straight and you can do the same thing at the top and just fold it over. Now I'm going to meet my pages like this and then I'm going to force this middle to fold where the two pages have met. Okay, just like that. And now you have book pages that you can add into your signature and they're not upside down. So say this is my signature I've started. There we go. And this, um, the book that I got these out of you know, is not a really tall book, so they fit into a half sheet journal very easily, and that is eight and a half by 11 paper or cardstock that you turn, um, just fold in half, and make a, start making a journal out of. That's a half sheet journal. So that works really easily with that. If the book page is gonna be taller, then I would just trim off maybe a quarter of an inch off the top and bottom and then start my middle binding part but you're going to open that up and see there's the start of a chapter you might want to cover up part of that and use it for journaling or whatever and then here's the other part of it and if you have any uh, lip here that is not laying down flat or as flat as you would like just come in with some more liquid glue and get that laid down a little bit better if you want to. But I love the paper bag, the craft um, whatever, or the coffee dyed paper that I have on this one. I love that showing. I mean, it's almost not even noticeable. You've got um, that coffee dyed or stained paper, coffee paper as your binder on those two book pages. Now, same thing with if you have ledger sheets. My ledger sheets are huge, so I have to cut them down either way I put them in my signature. So they're really tall, you know, like that. So I've just, on this one, cut the bottom off. And I glue two ledger sheets together because my ledger sheets are really thin. So then I did a very wide piece of that um, paper bag for my binding there. I've got y'all pulled in really close. That's why I'm getting off, off the screen there for a second. And then um, this is a wider piece of copy paper. And what I did on the ledger sheet is just cut off the bottom so it would fit in my signature. And then I cut the ledger sheet in half long ways and put my binding in the middle there. So I made my ledger sheet two sheets by just cutting it down the middle, and then I put in my binding, and that's my another page to go in my signature. Now, for bigger sheets like this, you can also do, like I've done here, this is two ledger sheets that I have bound together. So this is how big those ledger sheets are. I can't even fit it in the whole screen. I'm going to pull y'all back just a touch so you can see all of it, maybe. So there's the full ledger sheet. Okay. I've done the same thing. I've used some copy, um, 
yeah, copy paper, stained copy paper. And I just pieced it because it was um, longer than my copy paper. And glued it down the middle like that with the washi tape back behind it. And then what you can do is fold up to make pockets. Now, I'll show you. Um, our whole theme here is putting things in so they're not upside down. So see, on the edges here, those numbers would actually be upside down if we left it like this. But what you would do is add some glue here to the middle and then you could actually add it to the edges too. But what I'm gonna do is cut out this corner and I'll show you why in just a minute. So I'm gonna cut this corner out here and it's not just because we've got numbers that are upside down. I'm gonna show you. And then I'm gonna cut my corner out here on this edge, making sure I'm in frame before I start cutting that out. So here are my two full ledger sheets and then I'm going to put glue down each side here and then I've got that glue that I put down on the middle. So here is my fold up now, on my ledger sheets, there are no numbers right here, so I'm good. So nothing's upside down. I'm just going to hold that down. And we have pockets. we got a pocket here, and we got a pocket here. Okay? And then we have flip-outs here. So I'm going to use my bone folder, if I can find it in my pile of stuff around here. Here it is. Use my bone folder because this ledger paper is also too wide to use in a standard um, half sheet journal. So I folded those in so when we put them in our journal we've got flip outs and we have pockets. So if you have some larger sheets of either ledger paper or handmade paper or something like that, don't um, think that you can't use those in a journal signature. You totally can. So see, when I folded those in, and then I fold up my signature, these are shorter pages. Of course, the book page is going to be a little bit shorter than uh, your half sheet journal, usually. And then there's some dot grid paper and then some eight and a half by 11 stained paper, food color stained paper. And then there's another book page that I have um, just hinged together. And then there's another piece of food color paper. And then here is that um, full two sheet ledger hinged page that I put together. And there are our flip outs. We could decorate this or just put in some copy dyed paper to, uh, yeah, copy dyed paper. That's right, Melina. <laughs> to write on, but I love the note um, notebook holes. So that's why I put my ledger paper together like that. And then you've got those flip outs. This could be a cute center of a signature. You've got those flip outs and then you have your pockets here and here. I would want to do a little bit of decorating, maybe add some cardstock onto this because this ledger paper is so thin. Um, you could get a little bit more sturdiness on those pockets and same thing on the flip outs, but I love how that looks. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you that you can add to your signatures. Um, and sometimes when you start to add this thing, it's directional and it turns out sideways. So this paper has been our cardstock, so it is rather thick. It has been in my stash for a while. I had to move a wire, sorry. It kind of jostled all around. And I've been wanting to add it to 
my signature. But unlike um, words on a book page that I don't mind going sideways, this I would not want it to be sideways. I want it to be up and down like this. And I love that butterfly. I've got one on both pieces of scrap that I have left over. So I'm going to do the same thing with this um, cardstock and um, whoever gets it has this nice um, white background. It is not double sided cardstock. So um, there's plenty of room for journaling on the back and it's going to give me a little short page too, not a full um, height page. So I really like this, but I need to, if I'm going to hinge these two together to add to my journal, I need to trim off some of this. Or I can score it and have a fold behind and make tucks, and that's what I'm going to do. So I've uh, come up with that to do here, and I want this one to be my front side I do believe well either one would work and this one has a little bit more writing on the front so that one's fine to do like that too so I need for this to be like this and first off I need to trim these so they are the same height now you don't have to have them the same height because one's going to be in the front of your signature and the other one will be toward the back of your signature so it won't matter if they're um, a little bit taller than the other but I do want these to be the same so I'm going to trim off the bottom of this one and it looks like I just need about a 16th of an inch cut off of that one. There we go. So now they're the same height. They are the same width. And I'm going to go ahead and put my score lines on these two so that when I get them hinge together I won't have to worry about putting a score line on there so I think I need to go an inch in for my fold around so if I go one inch in there yes it's going to give me enough but I think I might go an inch and a quarter just so that it is a nice short um, piece and it is thicker it's cardstock it's not just paper so I want to make sure that I have enough of it inside so it's not protruding out once I finish the journal so let's go an inch and a quarter in I'm gonna go this way here's an inch and a quarter okay and then same thing on this one an inch and a quarter and now I'm going to hinge these together and let's say I might have scored the wrong side on one of these here I want to need to do this here yep I did I need to score that side I'm not worried about it having a score line on it um, let's go inch and a quarter and I will do it like this inch and a quarter and score it so I don't have to get my score pal back up here there we go now I think I got it right so I'm going to butt these up together and then get my washi tape okay and make sure I've got I can feel a score line there I can feel a score line there so we're good with that I'm going to get that washi and you can even fold the washi over on the other side too just to give yourself a little bit more reinforcement so right down the middle 
so they're butted up to each other and I'm going to flip it over and roll over my washi like that and then I'm going to get some coffee dyed paper and look at that it's almost perfect yep and I'm going to glue that onto the pages I'm just putting some glue on either side of the washi tape and then right at the middle of the washi tape and then put on my coffee dyed paper or tea stain paper or whatever this was whatever session this was from and then I'm going to move it over just to make sure that I'm pretty much straight down the middle of that hinge and then I'm going to flip this over and use my sticky scissors and trim off that excess and then I'm also going to come in on the inside here and put another piece to hinge it just because this is cardstock so it's thicker and it needs a little extra help on hinging let's see let's do some of that paper bag okay and I'm just going to give myself a little mark of where I want it and then where I need to trim it off I'm go a little bit longer just to make sure I get enough and cut my paper bag and I'm not too worried about it being straight 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 okay and then trim off my length and make sure I've got enough before I start gluing and I do and since I moved that washi or folded that washi over, I've got kind of a line that I can go by before I put that paper bag on. And then I'm going to come all the way down and put that in place. And then I'm going to use my messy rag. I had someone ask about my messy rag and if it was anything special as far as um, crafting was concerned and it's not it is just a, a dish rag or a dish cloth but it does have it's one of those that has the mesh on the back I think the dollar stores have these plenteous in their stores so that's just what I use and um, if I get some ink or something um, or some uh, stubborn glue the mesh that's on the back helps to uh, get that up a little easier but that's what I've just always used this rag gets washed about once a month <laughs> and I just wash it in the kitchen sink and um, then it comes right back to my craft room once it's dry and now we can use our bone folder to help that crease and I'll trim off any of that paper bag I need to trim in a minute and you're going to fold it over and let the two ends meet really well Now you want to do this once everything is completely dry I'm not waiting for it to dry so I'm doing a big no-no here but you wait for yours to completely dry, especially if you're working with cardstock. Okay, so there would be my hinged pages. And what I'm gonna do is use my corner rounder and I'm gonna round these corners on this. And I did get some mixed media stuff on the inside of one of these. 
I'm not too concerned about that. It just gives the journal a little bit extra something something. Let's trim off this extra we had of that paper bag. And my messy scissors are not the sharpest in the toolbox, so I have to work with those a little bit before I get it all off sometimes, especially if I've got a bunch of sticky, messy something or another. Alright, so there's our score lines for our fold-ins. And you might have to get your um, bone folder to help with it a little bit. But you want to go slowly so maybe you don't crack the cardstock when you're folding it over. Because if it's really thick cardstock, it might be a little stubborn. But you don't want to crack it. Okay, so there's my fold overs. And what I'm going to do is get some 8 inch score tape since it is so thick. And I'm going to put 8 inch score tape on the bottom and top. And then I'll put a little bit of liquid glue right up underneath that too. And that'll all help to keep this together. And I'll be able to add this to a journal and it be upright like I have wanted to do for a while now. And um, just hadn't had the time to make a video about it. So I'm going to take my backs off of my score tape. If anybody, if this is the first video you have watched of mine, you can get um, all the adhesives and um, things that I use, the tools and things that I use from our shop, scrapbookingwithme.com that I mentioned at the intro of all of my videos. Okay. And these are sugar bell bottles. Uh, we carry those at scrapbookingwithme.com. Also, um, usually everything I use in my videos, I get from the shop. Now, if there is um, something that you can't get in our shop that I use, I'm going to mention it for you and I will link it for you. But um, if I don't say where it's from, you can just kind of automatically deduce that it is from our shop. I like using things that are from our shop. You know, that helps us out. So I'm just holding these down just for a few seconds so everything can get nice and adhered. And then I'll run over it with my bone folder and try to go in an outward motion just in case any of that liquid glue decides to spurt out, it will spurt that way and not inside your little tuck. So here is your hinged scrapbook paper to use in your journal signature. So you can add that here. I love little short pages added into journal signatures. So short page and a little shorter page. And then there's a nice little short page with a tuck on the inside there. Um, we can add this, let's do a long page, long page. And then we can add that here. Wherever you want to add it, as long as you've got that hinge on the back and got it folded correctly. You can add it anywhere in your signature that you want to. And look how cute that is. And you've got a tuck there. You can cover this if you want to. If you don't like the white, you can always cover that up. But I believe this is one of the easiest ways to add in things that um, are directional or have wording on them. And you can add them into your journal signatures and they be upright. So I know that there are plenty of people, because like I said, this is one of my most asked for videos, <laughs> tutorials on how I would 
add in directional papers and book pages to my signature and then be um, upright so that you could read them if you were just opening it up like a normal regular book. So that is my tutorial on that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you are not a subscriber here, I would love for you to be and click that little bell so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. And uh, y'all have a great day. And don't forget to leave me some love in the comments. Thanks so much. Y'all have a great day. Love ya. God bless. Bye y'all.